we're going to look at vapor pressure now. Vapor pressure is the equilibrium pressure that a liquid or solid will make in a gas phase above it. So if we put water half full into a bottle that was full of dry air and we cap it, we have a little pressure gauge on there. We'll watch the pressure increase and then plateau. So the water slowly evaporates until it reaches a certain pressure and then it'll stop evaporating. Well, it will continue evaporating, but the condensation rate will now be as fast as the evaporation rate. So there'll be no net evaporation, but it'll still be evaporating and condensing on a continual basis. Vapor pressure is a temperature dependent phenomenon. So on this graph here, I have three vapor pressures of different compounds. So the blue one is water, which has a heat of vaporization at 25 Celsius of 44.0 kilojoules per mole. So as we heat it, the vapor pressure increases, and then when it hits one atmosphere pressure, that's the boiling point. So the temperature that corresponds to that is the boiling point. So vapor pressure out of these three has the strongest intermolecular force is hydrogen bonding, but water does uh, a total of four hydrogen bonds per mole. It donates two hydrogens and receives two hydrogens. Uh, ethanol has hydrogen bonding, but it can donate one hydrogen and receive one hydrogen. Um, it's heat of vaporization at 25 Celsius, 42.8 kilojoules per mole. So it slowly increases, and when it hits the top, uh, when it hits 762, when that's for pressure, that's the normal boiling point. Uh, ether is just dipole dipole interactions has a higher vapor pressure and it has a lower boiling point. So the relationship um, are inverse between vapor pressure and boiling point. So high vapor pressure means a low boiling point. A low vapor pressure means a high boiling point. And at one atmosphere of pressure, we call that boiling point, the temperature of that boiling point to be the normal boiling point. Uh, a boiling point will change with location based on the normal atmosphere of pressure. And some properties of uh, vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is temperature dependent. The surface area does not affect vapor pressure. It might affect how fast it reaches the vapor pressure, but does not affect what the vapor pressure is. And the volume does not affect what the vapor pressure is. So this is an exponential relationship. We we're able to determine the equation for it. Okay. Okay, so um our try this method. Better? Okay. okay, so our vapor pressure is equal to a constant beta times a E to the minus delta H vaporization over RT. So we already figured this out. The units of B are going to match the units of vapor pressure. We like linear relationships. So the linear relationship is we take the natural log of that exponential form. So we get natural log of vapor pressure equals our minus delta H vapor over R, the gas constant, times 1 over T plus log of beta. And um, R is the 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. So our delta H vaporization should be in joules to have our units canceled. Temperature has to be in Kelvin. And if we're plotting this, 
it doesn't matter what units we use for our vapor pressure, our slope will be the same. It will not affect our heat of vaporization. The units on the vapor pressure will affect uh, the intercept log of beta because beta will have the same units as our vapor pressure. Often we can't do a full plot, but uh, what we can do is a two point version of this. So we take that equation, subtract it from itself. The log of beta will subtract out, and we're left with this form here log of P2 over P1 equals minus delta H vaporization over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And sometimes books will give us a slightly different version where they'll have a positive delta H vape, but replace the T2, T1 positions. I like this form because it keeps the same form as the normal equation. But we're going to do a couple calculations now based on this. So the first calculation is the first calculation. Uh, we're asking what the boiling point of water is in Breckenridge, Colorado. In Breckenridge, Colorado, the atmospheric pressure is 520 torr. We're given a heat of vaporization of 40.7 kilojoules per mole. So that doesn't match this one. That one's at the normal boiling point of water. So our second data point, so we can use this equation with two data points. The second data point is a normal boiling point of water. You know, that's 100 degrees Celsius at uh, one atmosphere pressure, which is also 760 torr. So we just need matching units in our pressure. The units will cancel off. We'll do the log of the unit this number and it doesn't matter which goes on top which was on bottom uh, p1 t1 or a match set p2 t2 or match set we just have to use these match sets so we put in everything that we have so we log of 760 over 520 equals minus 40,700 joules per mole over 8.3145 joules per mole kelvin times the Parenthesis one over 373 Kelvin minus one over T1. So we just start to reduce it down. The log term comes to 0.379. The ratio is in the middle of 48 and 5. One over 375 is 2.68 times 10 minus 3. So I divide the 4895 across, and that gives us a negative 7.743 times 10 minus 5. And then I'm going to subtract the 2.681 times 10 minus 3 across. So the subtraction of the 7.743 times 10 minus 2 uh, minus the 2.681 times 10 minus 3 gives us a negative 2.758 times 10 minus 3. And that's equal to the negative 1 over t. So the two negatives are canceling off. And to get t1, we do 1 over that value. And that gives us 362.5 Kelvin, which is 89.3 Celsius. So in Breckenridge, our water boils less than 90 degrees Celsius. It takes us a little bit longer to cook our food. So let's uh, do this equation in a couple more directions. So here we're going to Denver, Colorado. We're told that the boiling point of water is 95 degrees. So we want to figure out what the atmospheric pressure is. So we're going to use our normal boiling point of water again. So we're looking for pressure now. So I will just put it on top because it's a little bit easier to solve for that. So a log of P2 over one atmosphere. Got that at minus 40,700 40, joules per mole for heat of vaporization, 8.31445 for the gas constant. Our two temperatures, one over three. 68.2 minus 1 over 373. I start to reduce it down. This term of the uh, temperatures comes out to 3.639 times 7 to the minus 5 inverse Kelvin. So the Kelvins are going to cancel off here. 
Uh, and I pulled this out. So um, log of P2 over P1 is log of P2 minus log of P1. Log of one atmosphere here comes out to be zero. Uh, the product of these two terms is a negative 0.1781. So we got log of P2 equals the uh, negative 0.7. 1781. So to get rid of the log, we do the exponential e to a negative 0.1781 gives a atmospheric pressure of 0.837 atmospheres. Now, whatever unit that we use for the pressure here is the unit that we get back out for our pressure. So last one. Now we're given a, two different vapor pressures for bromine. At 90 degrees Celsius is 113 torr. At 20 degrees Celsius, is 184 torr. So we want to know what the heat of vaporization is for bromine. Well, of course, we have to convert our Celsius into Kelvin. So we set it up. It doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't matter what goes on top or bottom. Uh, they're just match sets. So I got my log of 184 over 113 torrs, the unknown heat of vaporization over the gas constant, and the two temperatures. So I start to reduce it down. Uh, and then I pull everything on one side so I get the heat of vaporization by itself. The negatives cancel, which is good. Our heat of vaporization should always be positive. And it comes out to be 30,489 joules per mole, which is 30.5 kilojoules per mole. 